part of the budget is based on some regionalism savings. Mm -hmm. Can the state continue what it's done for years with municipal aid and matching grants for education, even town road? Or does Connecticut have to look in the mirror, especially con compared to what other states do with a regional or a county form of government? Mm -hmm. So the budget does not include regionalism savings. It doesn't. It does not. And so you mentioned two things. One, it maintains commitment to, to municipal aid. Right. And the governor made it very clear that he wanted to give confidence and stability to municipalities so that mayors and first selectmen can plan for the next few years. And so he thought it was very important to maintain where their funding currently is. But what the budget does do with respect to his policy and his legislative proposals is begins to gather data so that we can make an informed, more informed uh, decision and leadership with respect to where regionalism might go. Examples, right? One of the examples, and this has been a really hot button topic, oh, yeah. is with you're respect going. to education. Yeah. Right? And so what is, and you know that there are a number of proposals that the legislature is considering that um, seek to probably... Yeah, there's, there's the, the one that's maybe a little more arbitrary, picking a number of students sure. or a population right. number. Mm -hmm. but there's another one that says you should look at the direct administration. That's really what you should look at. Right. The and governor doesn't necessarily have a favor on this one, correct? He does not. not. And, what, and what his policy proposal does is it says there are key data points that we need to collect um, reflect upon before we can make such a prescriptive policy change. And so he sets up a commission on shared school service, services with key milestone dates upon which that data should be received. Transportation, what kind of after school programs do you provide? What kind of enrichment do you provide in the school? So that that data can be reviewed and analyzed so that such recommendations in the future, one, have key stakeholders at the table, some input, some buy-in, um, but are data-informed. A uh, week and a half ago, there was rage, there was vitriol, a whole lot of parents mm -hmm. from lower Connecticut, mm -hmm. right, from lower Fairfield County. Do you get the sense, and you know where I'm going with this question, mm -hmm. of a not-in-my-backyard kind of thing, that there are some kids that they just don't want their kids going to school with? Are you getting that, or do you think it is purely, no, I, we, we just like the way things are? Mm -hmm. Look. I'm a mom and you're a dad. Yeah. And um, the education um, and the welfare of our children, it's an emotional decision, yeah. right? And I think naturally people want to protect. Um, but when you take a step back, and as Governor Lunt is governing and our legislators are leading, um, we have to be thinking about making sure that all 535,000 children in this state that are being educated have an equal opportunity and access to quality education. And, I, and that is why the governor is proposing that we collect this data so that we can make a more informed recommendation. Uh, I want to ask you one final question. We're going to get back to tolls here for one second. Sure. Uh, you guys have a proposal for a 30% discount on the Easy Pass mm -hmm. or Transponder, mm -hmm. whatever the program mm -hmm. is, for residents, but then possibly another 20% more for mm -hmm. a commuter. What would stop the state mm -hmm. from gouging out-of-state drivers? Just make them pay a ton of money to travel on our, on our roads, knowing that you can't just avoid Connecticut where you're going to those vacation spots and even those skiing locations. Mm -hmm. Why not do something like that to really maximize savings for Connecticut taxpayers? Mm -hmm. Look, I think the uh, what's most important to focus on here is that a critical component of any tolls proposal for Governor Lamont is making sure that Connecticut residents, and that's through a broad easy pass, mm -hmm. that's one option, um, receive some burden relief. Some of the other ideas that I really like, particularly um, after other states who've modeled this, would be for lower income households, yeah. providing them with a credit up front on their Easy Pass account. It's very difficult to say to a, re a resident or a person who's struggling, wait to get a tax credit in 12 months to help you and be Give them those something costs. up front but when something they purchase and they get the At Easy the end pass. of the day, our goal is to shape this in a way that minimizes burden to the, the, yeah. the, the folks of Connecticut here, and we're open to all suggestions. Got it. Melissa McCall, thank you so much for joining us. Thank we'll have you, you back at some point. Okay. Thanks for checking out Face the Facts with Max Reese on YouTube. If you want more politics in your feed, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to be notified whenever there's a new video.